today we will cover the second part of the inverted pendulum control tutorial and, and the main focus will be a rotary encoder. So the encoder is one of the crucial elements of the inverted pendulum system because thanks to, to the encoder, we can find out, we can estimate uh, the angular position and angular velocity of the, of the pendulum. So using this uh, information, this feedback, we will send uh, right commands to the step stepper motor to keep the inverted pendulum upright. So, so let's dive into how we can use the rotary encoder and how to communicate with, with the encoder using the STM32 microcontroller. Regarding the operating principle of the encoders, uh, I already have a video on my channel, uh, which I think clearly explains how the encoders work. So, so that's why in this video, I will just uh, briefly introduce how the encoders operate. So this, um, I think illustration clearly shows how uh, the, the internal structure of the of the encoders. So basically we have a disk inside with, with many, many holes uh, on, on the periphery. And we have a transmitter, usually kind of LED, and, and we have a receiver. So based on the number of holes that, that pass uh, between, the, between the LED and the light receiver, we, uh, in the output we receive um, a square shaped um, kind of signal and by computing, by counting the number of edges of, of the signal, we can find out how many holes passed through, through the, uh, uh, through the uh, receiver. So, so based on that, we can estimate the uh, angular uh, speed, angular velocity and angular position. Uh, so that's how it works. Uh, that's how um, encoders operate. And another feature of the encoders is that usually we have two channels. So we don't have just a one receiver, but instead we have two receivers. Why we need them? Because using the two receivers, we can find out the, the direction of movement. So if you have just a one receiver, you can, you can find out how fast your your the encoder is rotating, but you, you will not able to, to get the direction of, of rotation. So that's why we need two channels. So next thing, we have a output of the, of the encoder, square shape signal, and, and we need to compute the number of edges. And, and for that purpose, of course, in the microcontroller, we can use external interrupts or other things. But, but the great thing about um, uh, modern microcontrollers, um, if I if we talk about SM32 microcontrollers, is that in in time of peripheral we have already this um, feature, uh, this functionality that allows us to work with the with the encoder, without going deep in in uh, without much uh, trouble. So so let me show how we can configure the timer to work with the encoders. So right now I'm uh, opening the IOC file of the of the project I created. So um, if if you miss, I have the first part where we cover the step and motor. So so right now I'm just adding new things to to that project. Uh, also, I want to mention that the source code, everything, is available on on Step School uh, organization on GitHub. So you can get access to all these materials. Uh, by becoming a VIP member of my Patreon uh, community. So you can find the link in the description below. So let's continue our tutorial. So we have a timer. For example, I'm using timer two. So here uh, within combined channels, we just need to choose the encoder mode. And then uh, we will have two pins. So, for, so to these two pins, we need to con connect the output of the encoder. And also we have, of course, um, power supply and ground. So usually um, we have four wires to, to the encoder. So VCC, ground, and two uh, channels, A and B. So we need to connect them to these pins of the microcontroller. 
So once we configure um, the, the encoder mode of the timer, um, in the parameter settings, um, settings there, there is nothing we need to change except one parameter, which is the count period. So let me explain how we can set this, um, this parameter, uh, the, the right value, so to, to get the angular position. Uh, so, um, so imagine that we have a encoder. Uh, so what will happen is that when we rotate, uh, the output of the uh, of the encoder will be uh, will be the square shape signal and the timer what what will the microcontroller uh, and what the microcontroller will do is it will count the number of edges so faster we rotate faster the counter timer will be incremented so so imagine that our resolution is 500. So we have 500 teeth in one rotation. So right now, imagine that I'm reset state. So I will start rotating. So the value will be incremented, incrementing, incremented. And at some point we do one rotation. So the counter value will be 500. But right now I, I reached a zero angle. So what I want to do, I want to reset the counter. I want to reset the counter to zero. And of course, we can do it using some if statement within the code, but by uh, setting the right value to this counter period, we can do it automatically. So the timer will be uh, will reset the counter to zero when we reach the zero angle. So how we can do it? So let me open this encoder resolution constant uh, variable. So its value is, is this 2,399. So my question is how, how I uh, came up with this, with this value. Uh, uh, a hint to, to, for you is that the resolution of the, of the encoder I'm using is 600. So the resolution is 600 and how I came up with this uh, number. So the answer is pretty simple. Uh, so we have a resolution uh, 600, meaning that when we do one rotation, uh, the, the counter, uh, the, uh, the 600 teeth, 600 holes, let's say, pass through the receiver. So when we have one teeth passing through the receiver, we have a rising and a falling edge. So, so meaning that the, the total number of edges of the signal will be 600 multiplied by two. So we have 1,200. But also in addition, we have, as I said, two channels. So the counter will increment this amount of um, number when we do one rotation. But um, in, in programming in general, we start from zero. So that's why I have to remove, subtract one. So we came up with this value. So what will happen is that when I when I set this value, uh, I start rotating the, uh, the the inverted pendulum. So we have zero. It will one, two, three. It will be incremented. And when and when we do one rotation, uh, so the counter value will reach uh, two thousand three hundred ninety nine. And then I want to reset the counter value. So since we set the counter period to, to this value, it, uh, it will be done automatically. So if you want to know deeply about counter period, press scalar, counter mode, you can uh, look at my uh, another tutorial about STM32 microcontrollers, which is on my, on my channel. So, so that's it. Um, so there's a one variable we need to set, one parameter we need to set, then we need to just uh, save the file. So once we configure the timer, the rest is pretty straightforward because we don't need to write so much code to, to communicate with the, with the encoder. So, so let me show the header file and the source file I created to work with the encoder. So first thing I have uh, this uh, track to, to work with the encoder. So we have the timer uh, where uh, the, the encoder is connected then we have angular position, angular speed. And also I want to get the angle in radians. So we need to do some scaling to, for, to do that. 
So I have this um, member to, to do to get that information. And also I have a, just a, another variable just to find just to know that I'm running the, the code for the first time or not. So next, let me show this function, which is quite straightforward, I would say. So, so the first thing we need we need to do is just to get the counter of the timer. So the counter is basically equal to the number of edges of, of the of the signal. So we, we get it. And what we need to do, we need to, to get uh, the angle. We just need to multiply by scaling. So, so this uh, returns um, the number of edges that we divide, multiply by certain scaling to get the, to get the position in, in gradients. And then we, in order to compute the speed, we just need to take the difference between the, the, the past um, the angle and the, the current angle. So if we take the difference, we have the speed. But one thing to note is that uh, when we reach, let's say when we do one rotation and when we have this transition, we just need to be careful with that. So, so for that purpose, I have this if else statements. So otherwise we have just uh, this, this um, uh, difference between the new angle and the, the past value. So that's how things work. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so how I configure the encoder. Uh, so I have a encoder inverted. Um, so so I, I initialized the encoder. So we have this variable encoder. Then I reset the encoder. We have another variable to define the, the timer we're using. So we have timer two. Then I just call this update encoder, and and also I use I will use this global variable to plot um, the the angle, and also we have a um, just a dumb uh, halt uh, delay for one millisecond, but of course we could do it better. But just to show, I think it is in more than enough. So next thing I will flash the, the microcontroller and let's see how it is going to work. Uh, so right now I'm in the back perspective and I will use this uh, timeline graph to, to plot um, this angular position in real time so we can see how it works. So I have another um, tutorial related to this topic so you can follow that tutorial to, to plot the variables uh, in real time. So let me first resume the code. So next thing, uh, we can open this wire. So right now it is round zero, let's say. So then I, if I rotate to 90 degrees, the value will be around 1.4, which is pi over two. So if we do this, we reach pi, which is around 3.14. So if we do one complete rotation, we reach 6.28, which is equal, equivalent to 2 pi, then we have an automatic reset to zero, as you see. This is because of the correct uh, counter period value. So then if I do like crazy rotations, like just put it here. So if I do it like super fast, the feedback is, is, is like very fast. I can, I can get really, fast response from the encoder. So everything is, is working really, really well. So we finished the encoder, we finished the stepper motor. So the next part is, I think the funniest part, we will use control system algorithms, especially I think LQR, to keep the, uh, the inverted pendulum upright. Uh, also at the same time, we will control the position of, of the stepper motor. So we will, control both of the parameters. So that's it for today. And if you like the content, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to press the like button. Uh, another important thing is that on the uh, 
description below you will find links to the courses I've created about STM32 programming, about robotics. They're crafted rigorously to provide you with the, with the best guidance on, on STM32 programming and using um, uh, programming better systems in, in robotic applications. So there are a lot of things uh, and I hope you enjoy that courses. Um, so you can find the, them in, in the, you can find the links on, in the description of, of the video. So that's it for today. See you next time.